Welcome to more UK news. And let's just start with the topic I called rejected. Boris Johnson will reportedly greet only Theresa May as one and the only one of his predecessors at a dinner to mark the 100th anniversary of the Chequers mansion as the residence of British Prime Ministers. All other living Prime Ministers had declined the invitation for Saturday evening because of other dates reported the Times. In addition to the former Labour Party leaders Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, this also includes Johnson's party colleagues John Mayer, Major and David Cameron. Major's wife Norma wanted to take part. The Chequers Trust, which owns the venerable building complex in the English county of Buckinghamshire, wants to celebrate the 100th anniversary, uh, anniversary of the house as the country residence of British Prime Ministers with the event. David Lloyd George was the first British Prime Minister to reside in Chequers after a private donation um, of the house to the House of Commons in 1921. Since then, the incumbents have often spent their weekends at the country estate around 65 kilometers from central London or welcomed guests from all over the world, such as Chancellor Angela Merkel most recently. For Johnson and May, who reportedly were to be flanked by several other guests, the meeting should bring back memories. Johnson had left his post as Foreign Secretary in the May Cabinet shortly after a long cabinet meeting in Chequers in 2018 in protest against her Brexit deal. And now let's talk a little bit about Fashion Week. For the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, London Fashion Week celebrated its start with real shows and events. Fashion Week is not just about looking at clothes, it's also about talking about the future, said the chairman of the British Fashion Council, Stephanie Fair, on Friday to The Guardian. We have to get together and talk about how the transition to a circular economy can succeed, she said. This means the recycling of raw materials and materials that is as resource efficient as possible. In addition to the first shows on the catwalks, the industry, which mainly presented new collections digitally during the pandemic, also met again to celebrate. According to The Guardian, at a party by supermodel Naomi Campbell in London's Soho district, one hour after the start of the run, um, the, uh, after the start, they run out of champagne. Despite everything, the pandemic is still leaving its mark on the prestigious event, which will run until September 21st. Big names like Burberry or Victoria Beckham are not yet represented at Fashion Week again, and many designers are relying on a hybrid presentation of their fashion so that interested parties can also follow the shows digitally. And now let's talk about a topic of vacation. In England, the demand for vacation travel has skyrocketed after the British government announced a relaxation of the corona travel rules. The flight comparison website Skyscanner said the use of the site had increased by 133% in the 30 minutes after the easing was announced on Friday. Andrew Flintham of TUI UK also reported an increase in bookings for October, according to the PA News Agency, and expected several more bookings over the weekend. At rival Thomas Cook, bookings for the holidays in October are already 200% higher than in August. I expect this weekend to be the strongest of the year so far as people take advantage of good offers and use the simplified travel rules, said Thomas Cook boss Alan French. According to the new rules from October 4th, anyone who is fully vaccinated will no longer have to provide evidence of a negative test when entering the largest part of the UK. The previously necessary expensive PCR test on the second day after arrival should also be replaced by antigen test from the end of October. Yeah, unfortunately, a friend of mine had to pay for both before. But now let's uh, talk about COVID in general. The British government has relaxed the corona rules for vaccinated people, as I said, when traveling to England. Those who are fully vaccinated will therefore no longer have to present the evidence of a negative test when entering. And to be honest, this is really quite an expensive thing because a friend of mine that was here had to pay when she came here and when she got back 
two days after and on her way back. Transport Minister uh, Grant Chaps announced on Friday the easing, which is at least good for the people that need to travel. I'm still not pro-holiday, still. However, the new regulation only applies to trips from countries that did not fall under the red category in the British government's previous traffic light system. The categories green and orange, under which all EU countries have been listed so far, are also to be combined into one. Anyone who has been injected with one of the preparations approved in the UK, the EU or the USA and a number of other countries is considered to have been vaccinated. Travelers on the red list must remain in hotel quarantine at their own expense. Sheps spoke of a boost for the travel industry. And as I said, it really went up with the um, bookings there quite shortly after the announcement. Also, British Airways CEO uh, Sean Doyle welcomed the move but urged the government to go further and abolish all mandatory tests for vaccinated travellers. The new rules initially only apply to England. The governments in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland decide independently about their corona measures. And someone is right now on a, let's call it a war path. The British pop legend Elton John is, according to his own statement, on the war path because of obstacles for British musicians to perform in the EU after Brexit. I reported on that several times already. The 74-year-old has therefore already requested a meeting with Prime Minister Boris Johnson, but has not yet received any feedback, as he said on his program Rocket Hour on the Apple Music One radio station. Since Great Britain finally left the EU internal market at the turn of the year, British musicians need a visa in order to be able to perform in EU countries. Or in one EU country, if they want to go to more, they need more visas. What has happened is that it has become financially impossible for young artists to pay for their visas and to fight their way through all the bureaucracy they need for Europe, said Elton John. He was therefore on the war path to clarify that, the star continued. The Briton had recently postponed the dates for his farewell tour because he had to undergo an operation after a fall. And we have to get back a little bit to corona and vaccination. In the future, night owls in British part, in the British part of Wales will have to be presenting proof of a corona vaccination or a test before entering nightclubs and larger events. The Welsh First Minister Mark Drakeford announced that, announced that on Friday. In view of the high number of cases in the part of the country with around 3.1 million inhabitants, the Labour politician also called on people to work from home if possible. The rule comes into effect on October 11th and applies to all adults. The last thing we want is more lockdowns and stores have to close their doors again, said Drakeford, according to the announcement. Therefore, small but meaningful measures would now have to be taken to stop the virus from spreading. The individual parts of the country are responsible, as I said, for corona measures in Great Britain. The central government in London decides for England. Prime Minister Boris Johnson reserved further measures this week, such as vaccination certificates for nightclubs and major events, initially only as Plan B. And now, for a second, let's talk about GB News. The British media veteran and former BBC journalist Andrew Neil no longer refused the comparison with the US broadcaster Fox News after he left the newly founded news channel GB News. People should form their own opinion, said Neil on a corresponding question from the audience on the BBC program Question Time on Thursday evening. Neil left the BBC last year to help found GB News, a news channel that went on the air in June, and I don't want to know if I want to call that news channel. At that time, he defended the counter-project to the established news channels BBC News and Sky News still, still vehemently against critics who saw it as an attempt to replicate the success of the right-wing US broadcaster Fox News. Fox deals in falsehoods, conspiracy theories and fake news, said Neil. That is not his type of journalism. I leave it to them to draw conclusions as to why I'm here today and not on GB News, he said on the BBC broadcast. And he said, I was of the opinion that you can differentiate yourself from the mainstream media 
without getting anywhere near Fox News, said Neil. But there were differences between him and other members of the GB News board about the direction of the station, the 72-year-old continued. But he was at a losing position. Neil, who was considered the workhorse of GB News and was supposed to host an evening primetime show, had already announced a break two weeks after the start of the station. Brexit pioneer Nigel Farage has now taken on his role. And now a topic I called indicted. In Northern Ireland, two men have been charged with the murder of journalist Lyra McKee in April 2019. The suspects, aged 21 and 33, are also accused of owning a gun and arson, as the police in the uh, in the north of Ireland announced on Friday night. The men were arrested on Wednesday. You might have heard it in one of my videos. Another man was charged with participating in serious riots and a fourth detainee was provisionally released. The 29-year-old McKee was shot dead in a riot in the northern Irish city of Derry in April 2019. The militant Catholic nationalist group New IRA had confessed to the crime, but stressed that it was a tragic oversight. In the case, a 53-year-old is already charged with murder. The decades-long civil war in the Northern Irish uh, province ended in 1998 with the Good Friday Agreement. Nevertheless, there are still tensions between mostly Catholic supporters of reunification with the EU member Ireland and Protestant supporters of the Union with Great Britain. And just one small word to my voice, you might, I don't know if you hear this in the video, I hear it in my ears definitely a lot. Um, that happens when you are campaigning in a federal election and uh, are out there and talking far too much. So it's, it's, it's just overuse of my voice, so don't worry, I'm not sick. I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.